What's good, Internet? It's Monday, July 27th, and you are listening to Waypoint Radio, episode 331. I'm your host, Austin Walker. I'm joined today by Gita Jackson. Hello. And Patrick Klepek. Hello. Patrick, I know you are uh, very busy this morning because there is lots of news, uh, and, and news not in the sense of a press release came across our desk, or there was a big event, and that means that we all have to talk about the trailers that hit, but actually, over the weekend, there was a huge leak uh, of old Nintendo uh, information, like a ton of it, uh, in a way that, that seems like it's caused a lot of consternation and conversation. Uh, and I feel like we should just start there because I'm super curious about what happened there, what all came out, and then just also what you make of it. Well, yeah, I mean, like, actually, like, what it is is, is sort of, like, remains uh, some of an open question. I have uh, a pretty good theory on what I believe it is. Um, so just to, to, to back it up, over on, on Friday, um, there was a... Uh, post on 4chan with an anonymous link. Um, there's like an actual service called like Anon Links or something uh, um, um, similar that is used to disseminate, uh, you know, files that people don't want traced back to them uh, specifically. Um, and it was interesting reading the 4chan thread. I had someone point me back to the original posting. Um, and it's just a bunch of people like, you click first, you click first. Like, <laughs> like who wants to click on the virus and find out what was in there? And... Uh, it turns out what was in there, which has since been dubbed, or at least what, what happened on Friday, um, so the, the Giga Leak. Um, it had source code for uh, a number of uh, Super Nintendo games, um, N64 games, things related to like digital marketplace stuff for the Wii. Um, it was like a real hodgepodge of things. There were um, caches of emails from Argonaut Software, the developer, one of the co-developers of Star Fox. Um, that's where, you know, Dylan Cuthbert, uh, who went on to form Q Games, you know, has, uh-huh. has commonly been the face of Argonaut over the years. Um, so just a bunch of, like, really uh, random stuff that people ha- just started digging through. There are um, active, uh, like, every active build of, like, a Gen 4 Pokemon game where you can go through and pull up and compile, like, in-development builds of... Um, a Pokemon game that was like, oh, this was the build for, you know, April 7th or whatever, wow. to see where the game was at that um, uh, point. They've the, the fan community has built tools to allow you to build, like, a virtual image that um, uh, sort of, like, to, to deal with the different collections of software. Um, so I can't say this for a fact, but my running theory talking to a number of people is that um, some... There have been uh, two major hacks at Nintendo. One of them people are probably more familiar with. There was, um, it happened fairly recently in which the person was also then ch- charged with um, a bunch of other crimes, including some pretty gross stuff that I, I'm forgetting off the top of my head. But it's not, the theory is it's not that person. There was a okay. massive hack, someone that was uh, nearly went to prison for hacking uh, Microsoft and Nintendo, and it was never clear how much they stole. Um, depending on who you talk to uh, in the sort of uh, like rarity community and folks who pay attention to stuff, there's theories that it run that maybe someone's this person stole um, upwards of two terabytes of information from <sighs> Nintendo. And that various uh, leaks that have happened over the last couple of years, going back, starting with various Pokemon related materials um, related to like N64 source codes that came out. Uh, I had the article just pulled up a second ago. Um, yes, yeah, so, like literal source code for the hardware of the N64, the Wii, and the GameCube um, came out in what was this article? Da, da, da. In May, uh, just recently. Um, And this stuff has been kind of trickling out. The running theory is um, that I I feel like fairly confident hearing it from enough people, even if none of them can like necessarily themselves say that uh, what happened is that this information, like whether it was two terabytes or it was a terabyte or however much it was, um, it was disseminated privately to individuals before that the original hacker um, was caught. And that this material is most likely now being leaked out over time um this was happening a couple of times a year this was happening with some rarity and then starting uh this like really this past 72 hours um 
there have been now it's like the Giga Leak and then like the the Giga, like the, the the Giga Leak Part Two. Like there's just a lot. There's just a lot that's coming out at a, at a really rapid pace. And and like I said, it's not. This is uh, this is fundamentally different than normally what you see from leaks, which is like an old hard drive is found or someone right. Oh, there's something some unused on eBay cutscenes or there's like. Like uh, I think about like our our when we covered the Sleeping Dogs two leak right where it's like oh we got a very s- specific slice of one project where what we saw were some scripts some schedules some assets some marketing materials this is like access to data files being used in the development of builds across multiple entire projects life lifetimes well and, and also just it's, it's like coming a out snapshot raw, right like it's right, not right, like the sleeping right. dogs information like that, that was that something that just like showed up on a cd like right we totally like that was something where we like worked with our legal department like verified with folks that worked on the project <laughs> yes. like left out 99 percent of the material in fact it clicked a lot of good material that i uh-huh. to this day disagree uh-huh. with legal Ooh. about whether we should have that could era have. of vice legal, uh-huh. let's say I'm still mad at for a number of things. <laughs> Feel still burned on that on that on that particular project. Uh-huh. Um, but um, this is just like a bunch of stuff. Th- this is like uh, it just a hard drive cracked open and and thrown to the wind, and and it, and it is stolen material. But that, I mean, it, you know, on one hand. It has lots of really interesting things like verifying that, you know, Luigi, uh, you know, was supposed to be a playable character in like Mario 64. Like um, seeing old man Yoshi and seeing earlier oh iterations God. of like Donkey Kong and like early, uh, like the, the title uh, screen for Mario very, Kart. Very Is important. old man Yoshi like old man Logan? Yeah, it's 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 really dark. Was- <laughs> it's the same. Well, I think, I think the, but I think the, I think the implication was that he had, like there were like uh, like the Yoshis have, is, to my knowledge. Um, have never like had like their mythology fully like like what is the social hierarchy of the Yoshi? Yoshi? And like yeah. it, it was like oh actually Nintendo thought this too. like there was like aged Yoshis that grew beards. Um, this is amazing. And then yes, this is this uh, Yoshi is amazing. This is like the evolution. This is like what they first started Yoshi looking like, where <clears throat> it's so much more like a big weird Velociraptor, like a mm-hmm. cute. Velociraptor, and then slowly gets babified, babyfied, not babified. Babified <laughs> is different. Babified Yoshi. Yoshi, Yoshi, yeah, pig Yoshi in the city. gets less thick as time goes on. Let us be clear. Um, yeah. Well, he gets more thick in the mouth. His yeah. mouth gets thick. Nobody's really looking our for a thick mouth. <laughs> our modern here. conception of thick is not where Yoshi trended in this. No, no, I'm not out here on those streets. People aren't shouting to me, "Hey, girl, you got a thick mouth." You got a thick <laughs> mouth. <laughs> Damn! Uh, Stop, anyway. Don't do that again. <laughs> Wait, that's what? <laughs> oh my God! Animal is out here. <laughs> we're gonna get so many. i mean, we're gonna get so many emails. Um, um, I really love this leak so much, but as from a perspective of an artist, it is incredible to see the process here. Yeah, I, I feel like. That is the one wonderful thing that we are witnessing is like the Nintendo process is such a black box. And yeah. these games, they want us to believe they come out of the Nintendo magic machine fully formed and perfect. But here we're seeing like iteration. I love right. iteration. I need people to understand that iteration is a part of the artistic process. Nothing comes out perfect. And when people want you to believe that they only make perfect things perfectly, they are telling you a lie. But it's yeah. also just like, what an incredible treasure trove for young people to go in and or old people, I, who gives a fuck, and remix things and make new mm. things out of these bits and pieces. Sometimes you need another artist's eye to understand the parts of the process that can still be turned into something that's beautiful and brilliant. I am, um, you know, there. It feels like there has been kind of a divide um, from the the kind of uh, archival community well, around a, this, right? 100%. So in my, I started doing this reporting on Friday and then like on the beach sending emails to people like while my, my daughter is like swimming, like trying to like tease out this 
this divider speaking to uh, Austin, which was that um, I managed to, you know, I've gotten to a place where I've got some folks I've talked to and I've got some mm-hmm. good stuff in the feature I'm working on. But a lot of people, including like notable people that, you know, you would think like, who would I talk to in the community uh, to like see what they would think? People didn't want to talk about this. In fact, it was a straight up sort of like, I'm not going to speak about stolen material. And sometimes I'd push back on these people be like, well, look, I I, I understand. Sure. Yes, it it is stolen. It is not the ideal way. Like in an ideal world, like game publishers work with archivists and historians to like, here's the raw material. What would be interesting to the public that also doesn't like, I don't know, like, you know, uh, 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 betray the privacy um, or or whatever of of individuals that or certain parts of the development they didn't want revealed for whatever reason. Like there would be there could be a process for this that other mediums have have better ways of doing and games has none of it. But I found like there seemed to be a, a real split in the in the preservation archival community about wanting to endorse any part of what might be interesting about this to the point of not wanting to say things publicly related to it because it would then be a tacit endorsement of like Nintendo's not a dead company right like this isn't like as right. so, someone was sitting on Nintendo's material and then well you know some decades have passed like wouldn't right. it be interesting to see this creative process in its entirety is it like, no like they're an active company they're an act they're going to be an act I, I'll be curious what the litigation fallout is or isn't of this, Nintendo is a company that is uh, notoriously usually like wakes up and goes, "Who are we gonna cease and desist today?" <laughs> um, sort of company. Um, what happens as a result of this? And so it has been a fascinating to watch. What I've noticed is I've seen a lot of, uh, including one people I talked to that like gave me a, a no comment or didn't want to address it. But then out here on Twitter, very uh-huh. much commenting. Um, there seems to be a split between like wanting to say something tacit and official about what has occurred here, but also you'll see even um, amongst people, uh, just the, they just find themselves unable. Like for example, Dylan Dylan Cuthbert gave me mm-hmm. like a very strongly word worded condemnation of what was out here, and then yo on Twitter is like, how the fuck did they get this source code to this software compiler thing that I haven't seen in thirty years? Like this is incredible. <laughs> so it's uh-huh. like he can't, even someone there. Who gave like the official like, journalist context? He was like, "Yeah, this is some bullshit." Like this, the sh- I believe he used the word bullshit in the official statement. Um, uh, and then nonetheless, cannot help but be captivated by how rare this is, especially as Gita mentioned for the black box that is Nintendo. It, it's it'd be the equivalent of Apple, right? It's a company yes. that doesn't do and doesn't do this. Almost exact, except with you know the the methodology of, of like how it was found. It's almost exactly like the time that iPhone product prototype was just left in a bar, and people. Yeah. Oh, I love that moment a lot so of much. Tech reporters were similarly up in arms about reporting on someone something that someone obviously just left in a bar by mistake. Like you are stealing that when you when you report on that. You know you didn't just find that serendipitously. You know mm-hmm. and with the you know everybody giving you your, your good graces, but. We have to think about if, I mean, I am on the side almost always of information wants to be free, right? Like we we need to, we have this incredible ability to store almost all of the information in human history and that information I believe should be accessible to people. And if it's deemed in the common good to have access to some of the information this leak, man, uh, fuck to corporate secrets is what I feel. I I can't make myself experience, I I need a... I would be very interested in the perspective from the people on the side of the development that condemns us, even though I don't think I'll ever agree with them, because I my impulse is always, almost immediately, a uh, great fuck keeping every this all the secret. I think that's stupid and bad. <laughs> At the same time, like uh, I, I don't, I don't like. There was this one time where um, Arthur Geese, formerly of, Poly- of Polygon, did this experiment where he wrote a review on Twitch. Like, he's like, I'm going to show people what it's like to write a review. And like, it create it put like such a, I like, just like, I like recoiled in yeah. like disgust at like, I was like, that's fascinating. Like more power to you. But yeah. I can't help. But like when I flip that around on me, like I would never, like when I share a draft of like a piece that I'm working on, that means a lot to me. I, I don't like, I, that draft doesn't exist after it's been edited. Like, it's gone. <laughs> like, yeah. bye-bye. Um, yeah. If someone wants to ask me about how I got from here to there, and maybe I'd like to share an excerpt, I, I, like, I, I'm like, I'm torn of it because, like, yes, yeah. I, 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 I find myself, like, agreeing with you, Gita, being like, this, like, Nintendo especially is so unique that to, to learn about their process on this grander level feels 
um, like important. Like it is capital yeah, like I culturally important. important. To culturally yeah. important. At the same time, like most of these people are s- still alive and are creatives. <laughs> and if I was asked to do the same with my own work, um, I I would tell you to fuck off. Um, yeah. And so if you, I, uh, a bunch of Google Docs with drafts of my most important or you know <laughs> most struggled pieces I really struggled with were released on the line, I would be super embarrassed. Even if people found things in those drafts that they thought were interesting and culturally And they important. would, right? They would yeah. be like, oh, wow, this is like the early version of this piece that I really like, or here's something that... Here's how that, they landed on this really like phrase right. that resonated with me, and it turns out yeah. it was dog shit two drafts ago. Two, right, you know? yeah, totally. Yeah, 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 yeah. And that's fascinating. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, I think a lot about there, I think a lot about the ways in which, um, you know, the letters of important people get published after they're dead because their estate finds something interesting there, which speaks back to the kind of like negotiated version of this that that one of the two of you said was the ideal uh, of like oh you work with archivists you the archivists yeah. determine what's what's publicly you know worth worth seeing and and the company decides da, 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 da. i think that the, the the most interesting divide here or the, the clearest divide that i've seen is very much between folks who are on the professional end of this and folks who are at the hobbyist end of this yes. where uh, I mean, there is there look is also Discord, the, the look at YouTube. Yes, it's like blowing yes. up. As I'm, I'm in 100%. two separate Discords where I'm watching the dissection of the files in real time, and it's it's like a mixture of like racism and memes and all of the course, weird of parts course, of, 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 of 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 like of internet the culture. The shittiest parts of the shittiest yeah, uh-huh. parts of internet culture, and yet it is undeniably fascinating. And and they're not, you know, I, I can't ascribe motivations to each individual person, but like it comes from a desire, like this is fascinating, this is they're amazing, not, this is important. Right, they're not looking for something to exploit for financial gain. They're not no, like, they're, well, what's I want the partner to tweet relationship? Out the image of Yoshi, so I get the tweets, right. but also to share I'm, something. I'm cool going to be the one people. who shares the uncompressed version of Star Wolf saying, "Can't let you do that, Star Fox," which is so smooth. Oh my God, people, please go listen to Wolf say, "Can't let what you, you do just, that." Is this what you yeah, just? Yeah, uh-huh. Okay, listen, I, yeah, I if you played Star. Star Fox, you should play. You should hear it. <laughs> That's incredible. That's incredible. You can hear the room he's in. That's how clear it. You could. I can tell you the size of the studio. I can space. feel the echo. Yeah, a hundred percent. I can't, I can't let you do wall. that yeah. stuff. It's huh? so it's good. amazing. It's so good. I'm going to make so- that text alert now. <laughs> can that be my? <laughs> whenever my date, whenever my daycare calls me, like. Uh, that it's always going to be your kid's sick, come pick him up. And I want that voice you to be like, can't let, you, let do you do that, that Star Fox. Fox. <laughs> um, the, 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 I saw Mike Micah out here, who, Mike Micah, obviously, on that professional side of the, emu- or the, uh, the, the archival community, works Digital works, Eclipse. They just, they which, just put out a, a really cool Samurai uh, uh, Showdown collection yes. in which Digital they Eclipse ha- has been doing this now for a decade, right? Like, yeah, they've they worked remember, on the Mega Man collection, yes. and, they, and they're doing the thing that we've wanted from all sorts of studios before, which is like, hey, don't just don't just sell us the eight games again. Like, right. learn something about, like, and not just concept art. Like, do I think about that? They just did that Disney's Aladdin and Lion King mm-hmm. double drop that had all this extra footage from the time and blah blah blah. Um, and and Mike Micah was you know out on Twitter basically being like, this is bad. This is bad for fans. This is bad for Nintendo. Da, 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 da. But you dig through those comments enough, and someone is like, okay, but this is exciting, right? He's like, I'm super excited by this, comma, but I think this is bad because it's a breach of privacy. And, da, da, da. and I think part of the one of the core conversations that are happening is is it different? Is the analogy of someone gets into Gita's drive or, or DMs and gets all of you know uh, all of your your unpublished stuff the same as getting into a company's uh, files? Is a company really should a company should we feel morally if not if not if not legally that a company deserves the exact same rights and privileges as a person in terms of privacy and and etc um i think that that debate is like a, a very fascinating one because it's caught up in a lot and mm-hmm. and the the kind of the difficult position that i've seen some people take is we have to because companies have more rights than regular people in this fucking world <laughs> um we actually need the world in which the the broadest law possible is put into place so that people will be protected in the same way companies are otherwise you end up in a situation where people aren't protected but companies are yeah and i don't know if i buy that argument but i but i i do think it's fascinating to, to like work over i know as a creative like i would hate it if un 
I would hate it if unreleased Friends at the Table stuff dropped. But also, Friends at the Table is not a billion dollar company. Is yeah. not a huge. And also, if it was stuff from twenty years ago, I might be fine with it. You know what I mean? If my old, yeah. if my old notes from tabletop RPGs I ran in college leaked, I'd be like, that sucks. But yeah, okay, also, here it it's is. It's an opportunity to talk about dumb old Austin and how, yeah. and then yeah. create the, like a link to the present. I, I feel always just like. Of course, I feel for individual people who are embarrassed or hurt by this. Right. But I can't give a shit about a corporation. I like literally can't give a shit about a corporation, especially in the tendency of video game culture to use the passion of fans to get them to fight your bad corporate battles for you. Yeah, for you. And I think Nintendo is a particularly nasty way of doing that because they make games that remind us of our childhood are nostalgic in some way. Yeah, and the, I just can't allow in my brain any sort of position that uh, allows empathy for a corporation over human beings. Totally, the thing, the one thing that I think about that does feel like it maps to where I know I would be pissed would be think about the stuff we've left on the cutting room floor of a podcast because we're shit talking someone uh, yeah. before, or we don't get clearance from legal. Um, if I think about the things that <clears throat> we are not able to there's stuff that i wish would leak out and there's stuff that <laughs> i there's stuff that i wish would leak out please uh-huh. uh but there's also stuff that i know if it leaked out it would burn bridges that i don't want to burn or it would hurt people it would put people in harm's day in harm's way that i would not want to put in harm's way and that we decided not to put in harm's way because of xyz reason right there's reporting yeah. that we've done that at the end of the road we just said you know what we can't do this because xyz reason or because we don't want to platform this person or because whatever and there's a degree to which that part of it and I, nintendo is not doing that work certainly but they do have relationships with partners and and they do have there are individuals who are making these things, uh, and I don't know what's, what's in this leak all set, right? And so I'm super happy to look at everything that comes out, but I would not be surprised if a week from now we get word of like, oh, there's some other really weird personal stuff in here. Or, oh, this reveals some sort of you know internal uh, uh, relationship that fell apart or a relationship with another company that is ongoing but that Nintendo has been like gotten the way better end of that deal and they were really happy about that on the inside and now that relationship falls apart between those two those two groups um, or, or whatever like I, I don't or, or just like I don't want to see uh, employee reviews you know what I mean like yeah. there's definitely a world in which there's a the, if there's the right stuff in there people do people do come away feeling shitty um, about about themselves or their own work and that's the stuff that's like I know I'll feel bummed when I see it I'm still on the side of leaks like this being something I'm comfortable with from big corporations uh, and I know that makes me a hypocrite to some degree because again I wouldn't love it about my own work uh, but I'm also I'm also a realist about hypocrisy in the sense that I, I do my best to to be aware of what I'm being a hypocrite and well, target that hypocrisy I, versus I think w- one you know. thing that I uh, mentioned when I was pushing back on someone who eventually declined to, to comment to me uh, was well look let's be real here right even if your argument to be privately is like well this is you know stone i can't you know i can't comment on it yada 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 i was like if we're real none of this happens without it being stolen and how much of their stuff already is stolen how much of the archival community stuff is already stolen yeah. or found but i just or, mean like there's not you know like, I mean? nintendo as a culture as a company right. was never going or there's no indication that there was ever going to be like that they were going to participate in an archival process that right. we ever saw uh, uh, you know a tip of an iceberg of of you know what's here and so all we see is whatever's cleaned up and released because it's basically good marketing or but they also or merchandise. don't even do that nintendo right? doesn't nintendo uh is very particular about its history and what it chooses to surface and repackage and repolish. But it actually, it doesn't do documentaries. It doesn't do right. here's This old is why artwork. things like a lot of asks was so interesting was because it was like the closest the rare, thing you had to totally. That. Or they did that they, when I think when Mario Maker came out, there was like a four minute like video of Miyamoto being, oh yeah, here are the notebooks that I first right. designed. Yes. And that was yes. like, whoa, look, there's here they are. And that was four minutes. That wasn't anything. <laughs> and and it was as dressed up and clean and and marketable as possible. And the same thing, you know, I think a, a lot of asks is, is a little more conversational in the, in that sense. Um, but the but the, but they're you're right. They they don't even do 
even I guess what I'm thinking of here is something like the um, whatever the the Hyrule Historia book is, right? Like, here's all of Zelda's history. Here's some yeah. concept art, and that stuff is meant for public consumption. That stuff is not here's the nitty gritty of what we do when we make a Zelda game. Whereas some of the Ocarina it's not stuff messy, that's leaked, which like right. all this like totally. indicates. You look at the evolution of Yoshi, and you may like uh, like uh, turn in disgust over it, but that's that's the process, right? Like they you don't get to that version of Yoshi that we you know is beloved by the gaming community without someone had to draw something and someone else goes, ah, <laughs> you know, like that's uh, going another direction. And so, but Nintendo, again, like they're like Disney, like they p- want to pretend that the creative process doesn't exist. It's just the end product, the thing that's shiny. Right. And I, I think Nintendo is not nearly as, you know, uh, uh, the evil, uh, as much as I love lots of things that Disney does because that's the world we live in. Like I, I think it, yeah. we're ranking evil companies. Like Nintendo's not anywhere near the, the level yeah, of Disney's Disney. Disney's a whole but, other fucking level. But like Apple, Disney, um, Nintendo, they, they operate in a, in a sort of culture. It's like don't think too much about like how we get like how we got there. Just enjoy the thing that's there. You know, uh, you know what's Miyamoto's quote like uh, you know uh, you know uh, about delays where it's like you know you, you, you know you can delay a bad game until it's good. And part of that is part of their process that like ends up in the polished like really um, uh, well honed games. But it also suggests that there is no process when of course of course that when we wait two years of delays like that the, what is stolen here is like what's occurring over those years. It's lots of hard work. It's a lot of people putting in long hours and. You know, I think moments like this are ultimately, you know, I can't tell what on an individual basis, but like a net positive for understanding the history of video games and like what it takes for a company that is deemed like seen as magical. So, well, no, like it's actually just artists and programmers coming into work and solving problems. And Mm -hmm. you you see them solve problems in, in this work. But having it all just uploaded to anonymous stuff. Is, is maybe not the best way to disseminate it. I just don't think it would have happened any other way. Any other way. like not yeah. me trying to like, hey, legal. Well, I'm I not think... saying go and <laughs> hack companies. I'm just, I'm just being realistic of, is there a world I can see where 30 years from now we see right. any of this? These is a no. voice, allegedly. <laughs> um, I, yeah, I, well, I think maybe even the more interesting conversation at this point is like, all right, now what? What is, what do we want to see happen now that this information is out there? And, you know, I, I just, what I, I know Nintendo is going to be litigious about this. I know that I, I believe that like you said the original, the presumed original leaker is already has already you know, been been charged with stuff and and yeah, I think they're on uh, on, how, on house arrest. Like, sure. What's been interesting is like, but where does that line? Where does Nintendo so end up drawing that line? Se- se- so they haven't sent me official comment. They will not comment on this. I, of I am, I am of I, they will not issue any sort of condemnation because at this point, had they chosen to, they could just do what the NFL does. They could just do what. Um, you know, like a band will do when a Trump uses like a piece of music without ad- like they could have all of this stripped from Twitter. Like it could all just in an instant, they just wave a legal magic wand and the, the clip you sent us, the screenshots, they all just disappear. But what they would do would force them to acknowledge that it exists. It would force them to like, I, I, my guess is they will largely ignore the people losing their minds over um, little discoveries about Super Mario World and Star Fox. They're just going to they will have a longer view of it, which is great. No, the, everyone, that's all going to happen. And then two weeks from now, everyone moves, or really these days, 48 hours from now, they move on to the next thing. The question is, does the, does the drumbeat of those leaks force them to, to like kind of hit the nuclear button? Because if they do force everyone to take that stuff from Twitter, they're going to create a backlash of people. Hey, we're just enjoying, we love your games. Like, we didn't do this. We're just appreciating what's here. Um, what right. I do think will happen is... Are emu- more like foundation, like a sort of like concrete examples of what can happen with uh, stuff like this. Is source code is is probably going to uh, aid things like the emulation community. And so, is the temptation going to be there for programmers who work on emulators? Like, well, yeah, wouldn't you want access to like hardware source code to like enhance what you're trying to do to play these games outside of you know virtual consoles of the world? That's the stuff that Nintendo would likely choose to be litigious on but i i just don't know I, I also wouldn't be shocked if they just completely turn the other way and pretend it all never happened but like that's going to be harder to do if yeah. there are leaks every 48 hours again my question here ends up being do news sites that publish the things that have leaked out of this are the, do they get sued 
Uh, do they get cease yeah. and desist letters? They probably do. I, the way that we would handle this is we would only embed tweets because then we are not publishing it ourselves. Not it, yeah. we're, we're not hosting it. It's not on our servers. I, this stuff I, sounds arcane probably from the outside looking in. But there are all these sorts of ways in which you're like, okay. You, you I, shift the, the legal burden to Twitter. Yeah, just to Twitter. To yeah, the example that happened here was I think we got in trouble once at Vice for publishing a photo of Tom Brady, I want to say. It was a screenshot of a YouTube video. It was right? a screenshot of a YouTube video. We should have embedded the, not us, not us on this call, but someone at Vice should have embedded the tweet because then it's on Twitter servers, mm-hmm. not on Vice.com. And yep. that opened up Vice for legal action because it was a screenshot of a YouTube video instead of, there was a point at which we were trying to do, um, we were trying, I, I, we're doing an article on board games. And what we were rec- what was recommended to us in that case was, can you take a screen for the header image? You, can you take a screenshot of an eBay listing for this <laughs> board game? Because we didn't have a press kit for this like defunct board game that no one had made in years. But you don't know. Maybe some litigious lawyer owns the rights to it and would ups- would be upset if you published the logo he gets a as Google the header. He's like, oh uh, yeah, yeah. Here, here's Get some money. Here's, a, here's five thousand dollars. <laughs> I'm gonna get this. People fi- are like that. settle. So- yeah. Some weird freak that every time you write an article about email and the development of how email was made, he will send a cease yeah. and desist saying that he is the inventor of email, even though this is demonstrably not true. Oh, my God. Yeah. Um, I know like, a lot of community. I know there's got a hit by sh- that guy a couple of times. <laughs> there's a Shakespeare guy uh, that I got put onto by Michael Lutz, friend of the site and, and uh, Game Study Study Buddies co-host, um, uh, who is very similar. Like anytime you write about, I want to say Hamlet, this mother will show this motherfucker will show up to be like no no one understands hamlet but me uh and he's just like a notorious shakespeare troll which is i love i love to have communities that's a way to be that's Uh, a way to be um, (laughs) uh, so yeah so thank you patrick for giving us that update that's that's fascinating uh i'm curious to see how it all shakes out over the next week or two like you said i think it'll die down we will all forget it and then in a year something will be like oh wow remember that big leak well, one thing we missed was this, or or something similar. Or if someone, you know, tr- you know, starts to take uh, the things I can see them like knocking down, like whack a mole, or if people are compiling source code and, um, you know, re- releasing builds that people can like. It's always the hosting of a, a file, right? Like Nintendo doesn't care that you run a blog that explains the Super Metroid sequel that you're making. It's the moment you click upload that they yes. suddenly care, and so. Yeah. You know, um, that's why, you know, I, my guess is you're going to see folks go private um, over, like, work they're going to do related to this. Because if you do it in the public eye, all you're doing is, you know, opening yourself up to uh, Nintendo's sort of, like, legal team. Whereas if you want to yeah. if you want to make, like, an emulator that's, like, aided by source code, like, go do it, release it, and then, you know, the internet does its thing. Um, uh, but, yeah, I'll, I'll, be, I'll be genuinely curious to see what they... I, I, like I said, my, my money's on them pretending it doesn't happen. Yeah. Um, Patrick, before we let you go, I know you saw more Halo Infinite. I did uh, not. Uh, hmm. I know you rewatched that Halo <laughs> Infinite footage with I rewatched people from that Halo 343. Infinite footage with two people from 343 uh, speaking over it. Yeah, they're uh, not a couple hours after the uh, Xbox event. Um, I had a. Well, the, so, you know, E3 <laughs> wasn't this year. Traditionally, often what happens is like you go to these press conferences, and then uh, a lot of times, like Austin and I, like will go to go to the press conference, and then afterwards or like later in the afternoon, like they will tear down where they had the press conference, set up a bunch of TVs and conference rooms, and you can go and play some of the games, talk to some of the people. Um, and this was sort of like an equivalent of that for Halo, which is like, hey, we're gonna live stream. Uh, some people talking and you can ask questions over it was like they set up a discord channel for the meeting like each like meeting had its own discord channel so i went into mine um hung out there with brad shoemaker they had a private video feed you could watch um where they had two folks from 343 just spoke over the same I, it didn't look any different to me sam makovich over at ars technica said it was the exact same thing um and it was just the same footage with them saying, like, boy, it was so cool to finally show it to the fans. Which I don't, like, you know, I'm, try- I'm not trying to, like, rain on their parade of, like, I'm sure that's, like, really cool to work on a thing for four or five years and finally show it to fans. Um, but it just illustrated nothing. It didn't answer any of the questions that I had at the end of that video. There was a Q&A session um, where 
I, I try to tease out various things about the structure. Like, it's like a weird dance when you know a developer doesn't want to say anything and you're still trying to just, like, get, get like, a vibe out of them that can maybe illustrate something about it, which is, you know, I, I one of the questions I asked was um, uh, along the lines of, hey, so... Uh, you know, it's an open world, which potentially introduces the concept of like different uh, sort of like scenarios uh, Master Chief can find himself in. Like most of Halo is you shoot, that's your verb. You shoot and then you shoot and then you shoot. Like that's it's a combat based game, so that makes sense. Um, but in an open world, there's going to be a lot of downtime. Um, like, is this the kind of thing where, like, I'm going to find like a little farmer and they got the covenant coming to take their crops, and I'm going to I'm going to shoo them off the farm? Like, is there like an opportunity for like a sort of a larger tonal palette in in Infinite, even if you can't speak specifically to there and like, oh well, yeah, there'll be lots of quiet moments. And I was like, mm-hmm. oh, all right, all, okay. Um, so it was like I I was talking about this with someone who uh, works. Uh, pretty high up in video games to like bounce off my thoughts on like what happened here and their feedback on it was um, because they've worked a lot in communications and PR and like rolls out of rollouts of various games is that um, they, whatever three, four, three or Microsoft, like hard to know where that uh, split happens. Their idea of what they thought people wanted to see from this game turns out to have been like pretty different than what a lot of people wanted to see from that uh, this game and those answers may be in that game but that uh the first impression like the most important impression like was fumbled so poorly that they're going to be fighting this every day until launch like those screenshots they're going to be fighting at like i'm not gonna be surprised if like in a couple of weeks they put out like updated screenshots that are specifically meant to emphasize lighting to like show like look there's more going on yeah i definitely saw some folks saying that part of the reason that stuff looked so bad was because those areas were not lit well um which is like a weird i don't know that that's the safety valve from this discourse that you think it is you know what i mean like yeah or like i saw that someone's like you know microsoft said oh it was a build from january um which would make sense uh, to the degree that e3 demos are planned like, well in advance. Well, yeah. well in advance. Like, they are thinking about E3 demos six months before E3. They are specifically constructed to be an E3 demo. Mm-hmm. Um, and they spend time polishing that. It's the equivalent of, like, you make a vertical slice at the beginning of development to prove this is what we want to do and we'll build it out. And then you'd make another vertical slice for your demos to prove, well, this is what the whole game will look like when it's finished. And so it being a January build is not shocking because that's of course where they would start to, to figure out the story they wanted to tell in that eight minutes. Um, but I don't, you know, I don't expect the game to look, it'll probably look better, but I don't expect it to look fundamentally different between it's four months from now. Like, yeah. you yeah. know, um, the game is, is what it is to, to some degree. I just think I, 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 maybe they just assumed there was more of a well of halo. I, I don't know what they were thinking, but I, I, you know, I feel bad for that team. Um, Given that it what the backlash has been like pretty like it's not oh, going to to a meme it's like it's, really bad it's, it's the return of the uh, the dude wall from guy. Perfect Dark Wall Guy yeah Wall Guy classic Wall well, Guy I've seen was... that I, it took me a while to, to see that people were spamming like the um, I don't know like what is what's that ra- the, the, the the banshees is that no banshees one of the vehicles yeah like, the brute the covenant and the the brute right the, the they kind of look like uh, you know like a lot of like gorillas and, and things like that they're like kind of ape adjacent um, and they've been pasting that guy's <laughs> face everywhere uh-huh. yeah there's just... there was specifically a wall guy brute like comparison photo and that's the roughest the wall guy for people who don't know it was um d- there was a screenshot from perfect dark zero one of the launch xbox 360 games mm-hmm. uh that just looked looked rough uh for yep. the time uh and i'm you know still obviously now looks kind of rough um but but comparing that to a specific screenshot of a brute which is a big hefty fighty guy from halo uh and and it's it's so funny how much like the armor matches up the whole design mm-hmm. is like the it, it looks like they're facing off against each other in a way that's like oh the brute has found has found wall guy and it's, is like yeah. it's my turn now <laughs> and it's it does it, it's rough I, and and frankly i think that it's tough because we know that we know that that console is going to be able to produce stuff that looks good. Like that's not a question. Yeah, it, I think it's, it's more or less been like just settled like the PS5 that it, is it's going gonna, to look it's great. It's going to have 
it, arguably raw, or, you know, more raw horsepower for whatever that means. Like whatever the fuck that means, days. yeah. But, who knows? But, like, it's not, like, you know, 10 years from now, if we look back, it's like, oh, yeah, like, the Xbox Series X had, like, a little more going for it than the PS5 did. Like, right. it's not a question of whether it's and a we'll powerful see, box. Totally. And we'll see which games on, on whichever box, like, do more with what they have and who the fuck knows. You know, my, a lot of my favorite games from this last generation were Switch games, and that's a yeah. console that d- certainly did not, like... You know, uh, outpace Breath its competitors. Breath of the Wild, you know, is going to be you know potentially yeah. Austin Walker's God. favorite game of all time, and that was a Wii U game. And it it was just a fucking, happened to come a out Wii on Switch. It's a Wii U game that came out on Switch. Exactly, it's a Wii U game that have, if you've looked up what Breath of the Wild looks like on PC now. Speak, speaking of illegal uh, uh, Nintendo, listen, if you dump your own BIOS and uh-huh. you own the game and dump that, then it's totally legal to do uh, to play it with an emulator. That's what everyone's doing. I have a Wii U right there. I could dump. I could grab that right now. It's not the BIOS. <laughs> it's some other thing that's on the Wii U because I also looked into this for Xenoblade. Chronicles X recently. I haven't done it yet. But Breath of the uh, Wild's uh, it looks HDR's so 4K. Good. It's it looks unbelievable. Em- <laughs> it's one of those things Put where Breath of the Wild on PC. <laughs> like Nintendo can't. I saw this argument happening between some folks on Twitter over the weekend. Was was uh, um, that guy Shinobi? Like he's on Reset Era and, and one of the mods there, and is always posting beautiful screenshots of video games. I know he works in games, and I forget the studio that he, mm-hmm. he does work for. But um, he was getting in with somebody about Breath of the Wild, and like, oh. Like, wouldn't it be awesome if that game was, you know, ran on better hardware, was 60 frames a second, like, had all the trappings of, like, a Microsoft Sony console, and the person was pushing back, and I sided with that person. I was like, well, then Breath of the Wild wouldn't exist. Like, Breath of the Wild is a product of the way Nintendo does, yeah. like, designs their hardware and software. So you do, we just have to live in the world where you got to go through the effort to play that version on a PC, because yeah. part of Nintendo's process is, like, they arrive at a Breath of the Wild because their hardware, like it just, it does. Breath of the Wild doesn't exist if they make traditional boxes like they used to, like an N64, you know, trying yeah. to keep up with everybody else. Um, it's it's like a you know, it's a cultural byproduct of just their entire history of how they've fallen for things. But totally. yeah, it looks fucking awesome. Uh, it, looks, it looks great. It looks I so give me that good. Mario Galaxy on Switch at 60 FPS. I, although someone pointed out recently, how are they going to do the pointy stuff where you were collecting the stars? I don't. Yeah. I'm sure they'll figure it out or just they'll take it out, out of the game. But yeah. Uh, and if they don't, we'll live. Their games look really good at the high res. That's true. All right. We so, should take a break. Know, Patrick, thank you for joining us. Gita and I are going to anchor the rest of this podcast. All right. We will BRB. All right. So the thing about long-term quarantine, staying home, this COVID world that we live in, is we're all at home. It's real easy to just be like, you know, what are showers? What is smelling good? And if you're like me, you might be at home with a long-term partner, maybe a roommate, whatever the case may be. It might have been for a little while. They're like, hey, we're just going to let that slide. Like, it's cool. We're all, you know, in the same boat. And over time, maybe as a treat, you know, you want to smell uh, like a little nicer, uh, but like, hey, let's pretend we're going on a date as we go to the family room for the 90th day uh, in a row during all this. And that's why something like Hawthorne is really important. That's why Hawthorne can be the solution to this issue. If you're not sure, well, one, you don't want to go out of the house, right? And so Hawthorne online, they have an easy quiz. They can hook you up with, do you want to smell better? Do you need some face cleanser? Do you need some extra deodorant? You know, you just go their quiz, and the quiz is great because if you're like me, and I've mentioned this before, we're talking about Hawthorne. I it just picking things out is just I don't I don't like doing it. Like I'm very much like, hey, go to this website, tell me what the good thing is, and I'll buy that. And that just doesn't really work with bodies um, because all of us are so different. And so they have this really easy uh, quiz. It only takes a couple of minutes to take. They ask, you know, just a couple of questions about like, what is your main face need? What is your hair type? Um, how often do you shower? How long is your hair? They're like really easy questions that even someone like me could answer, which means someone like you can answer them as well. And when I did the quiz, you know, months and months back, they they sent me uh, everything I needed to uh, smell great, to look great. I, I still use the shampoo, conditioner. Um, I still use the clone when my wife and I pretend to have a date night out on the deck. Um, and it's just, if you're looking, whether it's for yourself, your partner, um, or whoever else you might be uh, quarantining with, like a Hawthorne is a great way to get a grab bag of of things to just make that part of your life, part of your body, just you know, just a little bit easier to maintain um, as we <laughs> we stare down the barrel of doing this for who knows how long. And so, if you want to know 
more about that. Uh, you can take the two-minute quiz over at hawthorne.co. Uh, you want to check out Hawthorne at hawthorne.co. And again, it's really easy to confuse that with a .com, but it's a CEO, .co. And use the promo code WAYPOINT to get 10% off your first purchase. Now, if you order it and it turns out, actually, this is not my thing. Um, I, I don't want this anymore. Hey, it's free shipping and then free shipping back. Ship, ship, free, free. That's Hawthorne, H-A-W-T-H-O-R-N-E dot C-O and use the code WAYPOINT to get 10% off your purchase. Hawthorne.co. All right, we are back. Gita, I need you to, to give me something that's like a little more chill, a little less mm. like stressful, a halo yeah. drama, bad, and, and Nintendo leak. Oh, so what, what do you do? What is, give me something like a little more homey, a little more just chill. What, what well, have you been up to? Over the weekend, I, uh, I ended up getting a code for, if you're listening to this now, on uh, the day that it came out, The Sims Nifty Knitting. Mm. Uh, which is out today. And let me tell you some real special stuff about that, Austin Walker. Please. The best feature that now exists in The Sims is that if you leave out decorative balls of yarn, Uh cats will play with the ball of yarn. Wow, that's the best thing I've ever heard. It's so good, Austin. It's so, so, so so good. They've added knitting to The Sims. Just generally speaking, you can knit now. Can you knit stuff to put around your, your place? Like, can I yes. knit little, like, um, what do you, what do you, what do you, like, cross stitch things to hang up? Yes, you can. I've oh, been knitting, like, crocheting, hanging planters. They crocheting, have several right. different styles. Um, I have made, you can make poofs to sit okay. on or to place things upon, which uh, I've unlocked the ability to do. You can make sweaters that you can keep for yourself or gift to people, which are really cute. The sweaters also, they come with different moodlets when the characters put them on, and mm-hmm. you can, in fact, Make a cursed sweater that will just make uh, whoever you give it to feel itchy all the fucking time, which is, sounds Great. really adorable. That's fantastic. Wait, I'm I pulled up a trailer. Gita, is that Yarny? Is Yarny in this? Yarny is in it. I mean, that makes sense. EA owns. That's yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. But I just he's made need, of yarn. He's made of yarn, and he's he's in the video game now. Yarny's in it. Yarny's uh, in it. It was really important to me that I. You know, he's not just in it once, actually. He's in it twice. Wait. Uh, Yarny, you can make a Yarny that you can play with as a friend. Uh-huh. And you can make a Yarny that you can uh, you can just have decoratively hanging out. De- I just sent you a yarny. picture. Thank you a for decorative this de- Yarny. Oh, thank you for this decorative Yarny. The trailer also says there's some. There's a fake Etsy. Is that new? Yes. Is Plopsy yes, it's new? Yes, brand new. Oh, my God. All I have been doing <laughs> is playing decorative Plopsy. Yarny and Patrick left the group. <laughs> Uh, he doesn't need to see that shit. Get that you know, shit I wanted out of to here. show you just like the vibes you get. Oh yeah, was, I love this. I love this. Yeah. I think the only thing is that they autonomously knit too much. Uh, mm. If you select any seat and like, time from to fucking there, go. I got my hands to go. I got to do yeah. something. So a sim instead of autonomously drinking water all the time, now will just autonomously knit constantly. Right. But it does it's- lead to these like really really cute moments like that sims just in a rocking chair rocking chairs are also new and they can rock back and forth and just knit peacefully here yeah. one sim is teaching another sim how to knit and i i like the sort of unsure uh animations there yeah. i is think this, they're really really what cute I'm doing? yeah is this what knitting is that's is how i felt when yeah. i started to learn what knitting is uh i created um, a group for the sim called knitting circle you can create clubs in the sim hell yeah so the the things that gain us club points are knitting and just being friendly and listening to music. It's I really love nice. that. I love that. I, I don't know why I'm so obsessed with fake Etsy. I guess partly because I'm it's, curious if it does it interact really with cool. the rest of the Sim stuff. Because like right now, I know one of the ways that people make money when playing The Sims is they like, oh, I'm gonna be a, I'm gonna be a novelist or, or like a writer, and that's like not a job. That's not a job where you okay. So. In The Sims, there's a bunch of ways to pay your bills. One of them is to get a job. And when you get a job, you have a schedule, and that means you leave the house on your work days. 
to and you just you in Sims 4 do you disappear you go to like an imaginary place there's not yeah, like it's a, a rabbit physical, hole that's a rabbit hole right yeah yeah right duh uh of course it's a rabbit hole Some why have i forgotten the word rabbit hole have um, rabbit holes with an option to join your sim on the career that was added with the expansion get to work right um okay. and some sims have careers like acting which was added with get famous where you have a, a rabbit hole you go to or you can join them but in order to get the job done correctly you have to um uh do specific tasks like right. talk to the director right. or level up in a skill mm-hmm. um and then there's also freelance jobs and those are added with a free update and also there's more varieties of freelance jobs added in expansions like eco living expansion added a maker freelancer job right. this is not one of those Okay. Selling things on Plopsy is like exclusively ready as a knitting. side hustle. So, so those other things you'd be like, I finished a painting, and then you could right click the painting, you're like, sell this, and then yeah. you get a, uh, not a random amount of money, amount of money immediately based on yeah. how much, how good you are at painting, and then luck. You basically. can also go to um, spaces. There's outdoor fairs where you right. can hawk yes. goods on a yes. table. Uh, and there are, there's also Plopsy, which I think is exclusively for knitting goods. I, I think that's what they said during the developer live stream about this expansion. But it's it's where a lot of the Sims writing charm has come in now. Right. Like the usernames are all really adorable. That's fun. Yeah. Okay. Yes. And yes. there's something really sweet about. Um, so I I when I started the expansion, I just you know make a really big house with all the new build by objects with all the cheats, so I can just like see what is in the pack. And so, uh, for the purposes of this pod, the character I've made is essentially an independently wealthy woman who's just selling stuff on her free time on, on Plopsy. Uh-huh. And uh, there's something about the process I think is actually very, very sweet. You uh, just go to stuff in your inventory, and you, uh, you click on it, and it'll give you the option to list it. And then you wait a couple of days and see, see who bites. That's interesting. Um, yeah. Yeah. Is it other and people in your Sims town? Like, could you, could you sell something on Plopsy, and then some, you see someone wear your hat? Like, I'm not oh, sure yet. They should do I, that. I, I, I need I to hope know that that is true. You I'm know? also looking. You can buy stuff from Plopsy, and yes. you're talking about the usernames here in this trailer. There's someone. Some of them are like, oh, Simtastic. Like, okay, that's a Wonder yeah. Dog. Okay, that's right. this person has a teal and yellow bear beanie that's listed mm-hmm. by Crumple Bottom One. Yes. Damn, he got Love that, that Crumple, Crumple Bottom. bottom. <laughs> Yay! That's... Agnes Crumplebottom is the I think. Oh, is there a there's a, a is real there a... character? Mm. Yeah. So maybe, Agnes so maybe they are. Maybe these are real people in the world who will buy and sell your stuff. That's that absolutely would be the best, right? Like yeah. I um I recently got a uh, sold a piece to uh to definitely not meat wall. Oh, there is a great. new object in the the Maker expansion that allows you to grow just a, a fake meat on a wall. No, it's great. I, mm, <laughs> so, I mean, I guess if it, I would eat synth meat. I would eat wall meat. If you told me this meat was synth- synthetically made on a wall, but it's good. It's just it's clean. It's safe. Eat the, No one suffered. Nothing suffered. You know. Um, yeah. I would eat that meat. That wall meat. I'd yeah. give it a shot. But would I'm you not... let it buy a, a hat from you from Plopsy? Listen, I'm I. My knitted <laughs> goods are available to all comers. I don't I don't discriminate. If you're a piece of wall meat and you want to buy this hat I I knitted poorly, that's on you. <laughs> I'll take Listen, your cash. I feel that. Or you don't lie, I, you know. The hustle, the hustle, I, yeah, please, is real. Please, um, cool. I've also been playing something kind of chill and I think worth worth shouting out. It's out this week. Um, uh, it's called Thousand Threads, uh, which I'll send you oh. a trailer of. And it's it's a weird it's a it's a thing that's that is I really I okay so this is one of those games where I was like oh I don't know if this is go- okay let me actually rewind um, I played uh, or I, I first found out about this game a few years ago and I did an interview with the developer of the game. And I believe it's a solo developer. Um, uh, uh, there's a pro- the, the name of the company is Seamount. And the reason I believe it's a solo developer is because I did an interview with him. His name is Brett, and I have his full name somewhere. And I uh, Brett Johnson. Um, and he was just, I, I met him at a PAX, or I didn't meet him at a PAX. I'd seen the trailer for the game. I'd sent him a message being like, oh, are you going to be at this PAX? And he's like, no, but I live in Seattle. And so I took a car out to his house in Seattle, wow. uh, where he was like hanging out with his, his baby. He had a baby. It was a cute baby. And I played a demo of this, uh, I want to say two years ago. 
um, uh, and and we I think I released that that um, that interview there, uh, and the the gist of this game is that it is you are someone who lives in uh, a vaguely I wouldn't so say like post apocalyptic. Um, but I kind of want to say post apocalyptic it's, it's like it's like post apocalyptic the way the way I, the game reminds me a lot of a game that came out a few years ago called Eidolon, um, which is not like, going to be a mm-hmm. big touchstone for a lot of people. Um, it's not post apocalyptic like raw Mad Max bullets guns da 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 da. It's not mad. It's not post apocalyptic like Walking Dead. There are zombies everywhere. It's post apocalyptic like quiet small communities of people living in tents and houses that are clearly that they clearly they made themselves uh in the wilderness trading things getting into disputes uh it's a first person game um in which you are a person in this kind of um bigger community uh, of people uh, that spread across kind of forests, a desert, um, some other interesting little biomes. And in each, there is a person who, or there are people who have jobs for you to do, who have requests of you, who have mail uh, that they need delivered, um, and who interact with with other people people in those communities and so you know you'll meet someone who is getting beaten up by someone who is trying to like take something trying to rob them right Mm -hmm. um and you be like okay i'm gonna intercede and try to like make nice with this other person and that means that they'll like me a little more and then maybe if they like me a little more they'll you know uh they'll basically buy this stuff from me for a few more a few more bucks when i try to sell stuff to them so this whole systemic thing happening around culture and community and that that system stuff does not fully does not fully bring me in because there's just not too much to it. It's, it's kind of a superficial system that's meant to, what it does do is is put into play the, the sense that the characters are doing other things, but they're not ever doing anything particularly deep. Like, no one's building anything. No one's working towards any final end goal as far as I've seen. Um, um, and so what ends up happening is you end up, instead of treating this like a deep systems game where you're trying to game stuff or, you know, you're not doing like first person crusader Kingsy stuff, you end up, I ended up playing it almost like a walking simulator in which there's also a, 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 a level on top of systems stuff. Um, so instead of it being like, I'm going to go around and try to make friends and enemies, it was, I'm going to walk around these beautiful environments. And also I'm going to, um, uh, learn about this place. Uh, one of the big things you end up doing, the, the two big, it's, there's three big actions that you're doing in this game. One is collecting stuff and crafting stuff. Uh, it's not like a, it's not like a, uh, what was the game that we both played a little while ago for on Epic? Was it Beyond Trees or Among yeah, the Trees? Among the Trees. Among the Trees. It has kind of an Among the Trees look in places. It has that kind of like saturated color um, vibe um, in certain places, especially. Uh, but it is not like a survival game in the sense that you need to worry about hunger or worry about um, your, your like housing or whatever. But you are picking up flowers and pieces of wood and developing tools and upgrading your weapons to protect yourself from bears and wolves um, uh, and to get through the environment. Like, okay, I need to upgrade my pickaxe so I can destroy this big boulder so I can get into the next area, basically. So that's Mm -hmm. one of the things you're doing. The second thing that you're doing uh, is delivering mail. Um, Pretty early on in this game, for me at least, I found a dead post like a dead postal carrier. Uh, there's like one, there's like one mail carrier in this entire world. Um, and they are going around and, uh, delivering the mail and you find them and you find their letters. Uh, and you can and should open the mail and read the letters. Cause there's a lot of world building and interesting character stuff between the characters who live in this world. Um, and that stuff that's just like, you know, sad, you know, parent child beef, or really, you know, uplifting these two old people found love late in their lives stories. Mm-hmm. It's a lot like reading the the like the dialogues or the the emails in a Deus Ex or or reading letters in Dishonored or you know that style of, yeah. of storytelling. Um, yeah, and yeah. then you're also delivering those letters. I definitely also got a letter at one point that was like, "Hey, I think someone's been tampering with these with these letters. Do yours look like they've been opened and closed again?" Um, lol. <laughs> lol. Yeah. Whoops. Um, and the third thing is you can find these ruins all throughout the areas, um, and the ruins all have like you know basically you found artifact and then when you go turn in the artifact you turn it into someone who's like collecting as much as they can about the world and they are like your um wow how have i uh, what is his name from animal crossing um how am i forgetting mm. his name 
The Which owl. One? The owl. The your oh, museum oh. owl. Holy What's his name? shit! Holy, Holy fuck! Shit. What's his name? It's been too oh, no. long. I haven't uh-huh. been to my town in a long time. I have to admit. I know this is me either. I didn't even. I didn't even. I yeah. I thought about going this blathers, 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 blathers. Our friend um, blathers. So you can yeah you you can go turn this part this into to the kind of a humanoid blathers who'll be like oh this is really interesting. This is from the great empire that came before where da 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 da. So it's sort of like a, when I say it's post apocalyptic, that's part of it. So like you're finding these ruins and there's there's a story being told through the artifacts that you're founding or finding that is about this community coming together from a kind of diaspora of people. Uh, uh, fleeing from something, and then and then as you kind of put it all together, you, you start to understand a little bit about why the people are in this place. That stuff works for me, but it's 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 hard it's hard to recommend this game on just the I like I don't think like oh this is you should come here for like high quality storytelling or you should come here for interesting combat or even just raw like this is not a traversal puzzle game necessarily. But what I found was like two hours in, I'm like. Mm, I don't know if this is if this is panning out. I'm a little I'm a little bummed on it. Like it's not it's not really landing for me. And then I put like another five hours in it that night, and I just like realized I really like being in this space or in these spaces. I really want to like. There's no fast travel in this game, and I was probably thirty minutes a thirty minute walk away from one letter you know delivery spot to another, and I was like. I'm just gonna. I'm just gonna have this on. I'm just gonna do this while I have like TV on in the background. I just want to walk around nature. Um, it's such a pretty environment. It's so many like really beautiful places. Everything has just a sense of not wonder. It's not like oh the wondrous sublime of the outdoors, but there's a real placeness to everything in a way that I did not necessarily expect. Um, you know, it's the sort of game where if you're in the right headspace. The simple act of wandering onto an old graveyard can feel meaningful, um, yeah. uh, and and it's it's also just so. It is for me. It is rare to play something that has such a, a well-developed sense of tone. Um, uh, I, I'm coming off of the last big game that I played was Ghost of Tsushima, which had it, its tone all over the place. I think it was a very confused game about about what it believed or what it was trying to communicate tonally and you know uh, in terms of kind of thesis. Um, and because those two things were out of joint. It, I never really felt. I played that game. I liked. I liked playing that game. I played. I put a ton of hours into that game. Um, uh, but because of the that that disjointedness, I never really got to feel a sense that of like ease or comfort in the space, or like I never got pulled in in that in that in that way. Um, uh, and with with thousand threads, I just like. Yeah, I just want to sit in this. I just want to like be in this desert. I want to like walk through this this snowy area and look at these deer and uh, and and uh, frankly, I do think that at a certain point, the degree of like crafting stuff did work on me. The idea of like, okay, if I just get eight more of these flowers, I can upgrade my my health a little bit more or whatever. Um, mm-hmm. Really did like work for, for me in a way that I did not expect it to, given how little that side of the game actually matters. But it gives you like a little, it gives that part of your brain something to chew on while you're wandering through the beautiful wilderness. I should note that it's colorful and sort of flat shaded. Um, it, it looks like a I wouldn't say like a cartoon necessarily. Um, it actually reminds me visually of, of Umarangi Generation. It's a kind of that same similar, um, uh, very limited. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like it's um, like it, the beginning of a. a, a, a it, it's l- games made by people that definitely really liked low poly CGI, yeah. but are yeah. using yes. that style in a new way. In a new where way, it doesn't versus... exactly replicate what it was, but mm-hmm, it takes mm-hmm. like. The gestures towards hu- what what a person looks like, and then totally. keeps that as, as a gesture as opposed totally. to fleshing it out. Yeah, um, and I, I mentioned that there are like little side notes. So part of what you're doing is like, oh, there are lots of ways to get what you need to craft your upgrades, so you can explore more, or so you can buy what you need to unlock a gate or whatever. And the reason I, I say I mostly did the crafting and exploration stuff is because. Um, the the I, I'm actually I'm actually leaving out something because I definitely did do a bunch of like these procedurally generated jobs for people, um, which which are tend to be things like oh hey I really wanted to bake a pie for my I baked this pie for my cousin, 
but I don't have time to run it over to her. Can you just do that for me? And so, like, you can totally do the thing <clears throat> where you accept that pie from that person and then bring it to the cousin and deliver it or go sell it and then make the person who you took the job from mad. Like, there is stuff happening there, but I didn't find myself that I, I didn't find that I had to engage with that stuff in any big, meaningful way. Um, so my recommendation really is, like, watch the trailer. If this feels like a space that you feel like you're down with being in for a little while, pick it up. Um, yeah, again, I I, 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 I make a big deal of it being made by a single developer because it's it feels like it has that sense of um of this is someone's vision specific vision uh yeah. from the music to the the aesthetic the, the visual aesthetic uh to the way the game moves the, the way the character walks you can you can sense that through line that that um brett really wanted here so i definitely i definitely recommend it but with that kind of qualified recommendation of please know that it's not going to be that like systems heavy immersive sim that you're the next immersive sim that you're looking for it's it's like it's like a walking simulator plus do you know what i mean it's like yeah. Let's build a cool walking sim, and then also let's layer in some additional elements. And in that way, I think it's actually kind of a fascinating experiment in like what comes next for that genre of of game. Um, so, Thousand Threads, it's out on the thirtieth, I believe, which is just a couple days from now, uh, this Thursday. So, look forward to that. Um, uh, that's that's the big thing. I've also been playing Carrion, but I think I'll wait because I think some other folks have been playing Carrion too. So, next week maybe I'll talk about Carrion. Um, which is the opposite game. That's the opposite video game to this one. <laughs> uh, it's this is this is the that's it's thousand threads, chill, forest vibes, carrion. You are a monster who is eating people. <laughs> so yeah. yeah, yeah. I've Absolutely. heard good things about carrion, so I can't wait to hear totally you talk about it. But yeah. uh, let's let's talk about the other thing yes, that's please. happening, which is. Sports returning yes, in a way I need, yes. after a fashion. <laughs> oh, yeah, well, <laughs> baseball again has problems, but there's there's more than just baseball out there now, isn't there, Gita? Yes, there's blaze ball. Thank you. Or blaze ball. I, I blaze like ball. Blaze ball. I don't know. I don't know. Talk All to me I know about, okay, is that it, the fucking New York millennials are sucking again. No, tell uh, me. God. Tell me about blaze ball. Or blase blaze, ball, or blaze blaze ball. ball, blaze ball, blaze yeah. ball, and blaze ball. Uh, they're all. This is a an internet version of discipline, in a, uh, or not a discipline of a uh, baseball. In a way, it is about discipline in different, many different ways. But uh-huh. uh, not. The I think way the that internet I, is the I, internet I, version <laughs> of discipline. Yes, absolutely. It's just that we've started a new era. It's a new season of blaze ball. Season two starts today, and it's called right. the, it's subtitled the Discipline Era. And Ooh. I was, yeah. Um, Mikhail well, Foucault's so, Discipline in Baseball. Got it. <laughs> yeah. So uh, this is a, a game that's a baseball in, after a sort. There is a, a league of teams, uh, and they play automatic games through sort of a text box, a text replay mm-hmm. on the website, blazeball.com. B-L-A-S-E ball for people who yes. are looking for it. Yes, um, and you know the matchups are you know randomized, and they are um, man, it's bottom of the fifth, and who's playing floating. right now? It's Fridays and the Millennials, and this matchup has been like contentious for me. The, they're they're slightly better than the Millennials, which is the New York team. The Fridays are the the Hawaii Fridays, the Hawaiian team. Uh. Um, Dominic Marijuana is batting right now. Is he good? He should be good. No, he's, he's always sucked. He hit a fly out to a Elijah Venezuela. He's always getting it out. Like, he's always so pushed up is, the bat and getting it out. Is, um, this is fantasy baseball, but fantasy, yeah. fantasy baseball. So there's an extra should aspect I, wait, to this okay, fantasy I'm, I'm signing here. up right now. The teams yes. available to me to join. The Kansas City yes. Breathments. I don't have to join, but to pick my favorite team. Yeah. The Baltimore Crabs. The Miami Dale. The Chicago Firefighters, the Boston Flowers, the Hawaii Fridays, the Seattle Garages, the Beckenridge Jazz Hands, the San Francisco Lovers, the Yellowstone Magic, the New York Millennials. That's what you are. You're, you're Millennials. Yeah. Stan. I had to pick my home team. Yeah, I got you. The Canada yeah, Moist I Talkers. I don't love the Philly Pies. The, Sh- the, Charles- the Charleston Shoe Thieves. The Houston Spies. The Dallas Stakes. The Hellmouth Sunbeams. The Los Angeles Tacos. That's what the Los Angeles Tacos tweets I saw were about. Okay. Yeah. The Hades Tigers also. and the Mexico yeah. City Wild Wings. 
You got to do. Come on, you got to. You can't do Mexico City like that. You, come on. Come yeah, on. The, the 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 sunbeams used to be the Moab sunbeams, so uh, I guess they, uh, got, they got moved. The, well, so there's this other aspect here of this game, which is that. You bet, but you don't bet real money. You bet okay. coins. So this and is like using, a salty bet style thing yeah. where you're, you're, you have, okay, I have 250 coins currently. Yeah. So you can do a whole bunch of bets. Now, if you go to place bets, those are the, on the upcoming games that are now, you know, once the games start in an wow, hour, the they post started. the upcoming so the games. Yeah, literally okay, so just. We are in, I joined, I'm with you. I'm a New York Millennial supporter. We're in the chaotic good division. Yeah, a it's a, it's a rough league. division. Yeah, it seems like a rough division. Yeah. yeah. Um, but, you know, they were, like, dead last in the standings, like, within their own division and elsewhere last time. But the thing is, we, um, as players now, we are empowered to create change in a way that we are not in actual baseball. With our winnings, we can buy tickets. And with those tickets, there are 100 coins each. You can buy uh, tickets for decrees or blessings. And they've changed, right, this, so this they've is added different. a lot of blessings and decrees I see. since the first season. The first season, the decree that won was to open the Forbidden Book. And I am assuming that's why the, the, the sunbeams got moved from Moab to Hellmouth. Okay, wait, we have to slow down because you went from you can buy tickets to vote on things. Yes. What okay? What can you tell me? What is being voted on now? Because I don't right have now. election. I don't have voting rights because I haven't spent my money on it yet. Apparently, I'm so sorry. Uh, well, you gotta buy a ticket. Just buy a ticket. Buy a ticket, and we'll talk you through these Each decree vote options. Each can be spent in the election. Okay, <clears throat> season yes. two election votes are counted up, and changes are made by the end of every week between seasons of Blazeball. So that means seasons are a week long. Yes. Okay, and that means that and the the uh, the post game is Saturday, Sunday. It's just. Chilling, you know, it's the opposite. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. The two decrees with the most votes from the community will go into effect. Yes. And Some those of, are... One of these was available last season, and that is relegation. The last team in the league will be eliminated oh from the God. league and replaced with a new team. That's scary. Um, popular evolution. The team with the most fans will evolve with a capital E. Don't know what that means. Don't know means. what that means. The third peanuts. one here. Peanuts. 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 My guy, peanuts. What do you think that just um, makes like a? What if that just makes the whole like um, screen, like the entire UI, be peanut themed? I would love that. that sounds personally, great. that yeah. sounds great. The fourth strike, the bottom four teams in the league getting the fourth strike. I voted for this because the millennials the are so shitty. Yeah. Yes. Okay. It will take the four strikes. It will take four strikes to strike out any batter on this team for the following season and postseason. That's unbelievable. Yes. That's so powerful. Yeah. Yeah, that's why I voted for it. Wow. Um, and then enhanced shame. I, I think a shame is when, it's not 100% clear on what a being shamed is, but I'm pretty sure it's when you uh, are favored in a matchup and you lose significantly. Uh, okay. Yeah. And that means then, uh, again, the next game, your next opponent will start with runs equal to the number of runs scored in the shame period. Yikes. Okay. Yeah. You stay is, shamed. And there's also I a bunch not of need that. blessings. Which yeah, seem each to be blessing boosts. is randomly awarded awarded to a s- random selected player. We don't have to Vote go through the all of these. Vote for the blessing for a chance to win them for your team. But there, but there are things yeah. here like plus 15% base running. But there's also things here that say, th- okay, I guess these are all pretty clear. This is like plus 15 team defense. Uh, the best hitter in the league joins your team. The best pitcher in the league. Oh, they, this is cool. Okay. This is... Uh, Literal arm cannon, a Wait. random pitcher on your team will gain an arm cannon, maxing out their pitching stats. Uh, Soul swap, they bat. won't stop screaming. Randomize mm. your team's five worst players. You Great. know, stuff like that. Stuff like that. Okay. Fantastic. What should I vote for? Should I vote for something that we need now, like plus 15% base running? Or should I vote for something for the future, like peanuts? Um, I Do you want me to join your fourth voting- strike vote? On the you uh, join the first strike vote, and no later in the week you'll be able to cast more votes. You will okay. be able to vote for okay. a decree I'll, more than I'll once. Earn, I will earn more votes by by betting on these games. Yeah, so this is a betting, nightmare, Gita. This is it's amazing. <laughs> there's so much happening right now. How, yeah, this is it's the top of the seventh in the game between the Hawaii Fridays and the the New York Millennials. And yeah, it's I mean, a, I have a foul seen ball. things go out until it's three balls, two strikes, two strikes, one out. 
what out with, right uh, now. There is someone from the Fridays on first base right now. So you do get that really enjoyable sort of like listening to baseball on the radio. The, why did we aspect just fucking, of it? How, oh, I'd love. I wish there was. I wish someone was doing radio for this. That Can would be someone the best. just get on Twitch and just do comment radio commentary for baseball. Uh-huh. I, the only thing is, all games are played at the same time. Well, you so you have really to do have to like choose your which one you're game. covering. <laughs> Right, yeah. you do your highlight game based on like what you think the best matchup is, and then you do break-ins for like, oh wow, something wild is happening over here. The pies yeah. were shamed, apparently. Um, I'm sorry to the pies. But wait, okay, the pies were shamed, but the favored Dale won the game, so that means the the pies must not shame must be about something else. Someone write in and tell shame me what shame is about. about. Please. D- anyway, this is happening. I guess I'm doing this shit now. Also, it's yeah, a really there's a thing, thing here that, that says the book, and I'm looking at this, and it's a bunch. It's like a. This is like a constitution of baseball that's been redacted. Yes. Oh, that is the forbidden book that we uh, opened up last time. Sorry. That oh, this was, was a decree that got. This that is got, baseball legacy. This is like the, you know, like yeah. Risk Legacy or any of the other legacy board games. This is, I'm afraid you're going to tell me I have to open up a little envelope soon and it's going to reveal that <laughs> half the one of the teams is filled with nuclear mutants or something. Uh, no, no. I mean, not yet. I see. It's in your hands. It's in you my hands. You can make that happen. make that happen. That's true. Yes. That's true. Yes. I can't believe we're it, losing nine to five. I can't believe you've given me somewhere else to lose. Well, the thing is, you always just, uh, you will get passive income if they win, so just bet against them every time. Oh, I see. Yeah, and you can up that passive income with coins. If you go to shop, there's other things you can buy. Like, you can get high roller snake oil, which allows you to increase your betting limit from 20 to 40. Oh, interesting. And a passive income potion will raise the passive income. For 2,000 coins, you can change your favorite, uh, never. Your favorite team. I will never do but it. But never. I'm never going to pick up that Fairweather flute. I never. am not a bandwagoner. No. New York millennials for life. Yeah. You, there's something about loving a shitty team. I love that I'm getting that experience, even yeah. though there are no sports yeah. right now. I can tell you, know? you, I almost went with the Philly Pies. You know, I'm more of a South Jersey Philly team person, but I'm, I'm with you that. on this. I live in New York now. I want to be a New Yorker. Let me let me connect to my fellow New Yorkers and root for the millennials. Yeah. There's it's only, only so many traumatic deficit. things Listen, you can go through. If the bottom <laughs> of the seventh, seventh, we're up now. We're batting, and we got yeah. two on. We got two on right now, one out. This could this right now could change oh everything. Oh my god. Yeah, so it could change everything. Holy shit. Holy shit. All right, here we go. Schneider, Schneider Bendy, Bendy is batting. Schneider Bendy. I know this is great radio. Ball. Okay. Ball. I two really, outs I and one be on, ball. Yeah, two outs on one ball. Fuck. Oh, it's ground out. out. Struck out. Fuck off. Fuck off. Fuck off. And right, now well. we are back to Yeah, I don't want to yeah, talk about Yeah, this is what it. I've been watching the millennials do the on all a daily season, basis. All last season. Yeah. Half every half hour on the half hour. <sighs> all right. <laughs> I'm going to I'm going to close this otherwise I'm going to fall into a <laughs> hole and this is all I'm going to do. I, and I don't want to want to do that because I have at least one question that we need to answer before we get out of here. If you have questions, you can send them to gaming at vice.com. Send us your blaze ball, blaze ball. Blase ball questions. We'll answer those now too. This one comes in from Waz, who says, "What's something we should say?" I'm going to re-ask this when Rob is on next, but I want your answer now. What's something that is worth spending money on to get the nice version of? Bonus something or bonus challenge. It can't be something separating you from the ground, since those are the obvious answers. Hmm. By which I think I think they mean it can't be shoes. Fair. What's something? Sheets. I think getting nice sheets yes. is really good. And that can be different things. Some people like really high thread count. Some people like different types of materials, like a microfiber or something. Find yourself sheets that, you're, that you want to spend money on, that you're willing to spend money on. Um, and, and, you know, that will change your sleep a lot. I mean, the other answer there, sleep-wise, is bed. Though I guess is yes. bed something that, that, that keeps you off the ground, too? I guess it kind of is. Yeah, I guess it kind of is. Um, something that keeps us off the ground. I mean, a nice bed is instrumental. Me and Dave are buying a new bed yeah. soon, as soon as we get our next paycheck, because his bed is was bigger than mine. He has a queen, I had a full, but the slats on his bed are broken, so mm. my side of half of the bed constantly just dips into the mattress. Yeah. It's not great. Don't love that. When I um, need to buy something to materially and fundamentally change my life, I always think uh, what will make annoying tasks slightly easier Mm -hmm. and uh so for my apartment i have now bought actually this is a pro tip if you can afford this the the simple human gallon trash cans the rectangular ones are the best trash cans of all time do not get the proprietary uh liners 
you can just get any random ass liner and they still work the fine, but they stay clean better. They're easier to empty and to insert new bags into, and they fit into small spaces. They're incredible. They, that has, it's $40 for a fucking trash can, but it materially changed my life. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That sounds good. I like that. That's a good, that is a good answer to that. Um, I think that's about as good as 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 we can get. I'll, I'm going to follow up with Kato, Rob, and and Patrick the next I'm time curious. they're on. Rob I'm is so going to have curious. a great answer. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, all right, I think that's going to do it for us this week. I know we all have some, or both of us have even more stuff we could talk about, but it's getting always. it's getting long in the tooth at this point. Yeah. I'm so hungry. thank you as always. For, yeah, me too. Thank you for, as always for listening to us. You can follow us on Twitter at Waypoint. You can follow me at Austin underscore Walker. Where can people follow you, Gita? At XOXO Gossipita. Uh, as always, thank you to Bowen for letting us use the track Miss You off the EP Pale Machine. Find out more about that uh, at waypoint.zone slash BOEN. And thank you to Sophie for doing the edit on this one as Kato is thank taking you, taking a well earned vacation and taking some time off. So shout outs to Kato. I hope Kato is resting up well. Uh, all right, we'll be back later this week with more. Until then, as always, fuck capitalism. Go home. Ah! <laughs>